Louis Patron back again with the Key West Lou Legal Hour, and once again, I thank you for joining me. I'm going to talk about the FBI now. It seems like I'm knocking the government all over the place today, but things have come up, shortcomings, and they must be brought to everyone's attention, or if you already know, I want you to know what I think, because maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong, but we got to think about these things so we know what direction we take in life to correct anything if it's wrong. The FBI. Apparently, we're told that the Russian government had notified, had notified the FBI that the older brother, the one who's dead now, the 26-year-old, uh, had extremist views. He spent six months over in uh, different parts of the old Russia. He had extremist views. The FBI was notified twice that he had extremist views by the Russians. Uh, the FBI, as I understand it, said they did a check and they came up with nothing. Okay. And, but there was something. He was an extremist. Then the 19, the 26-year-old's an extremist. The 19-year-old's an extremist. And they plotted and they put the bombs together and they went out and did the terrible deed at the Boston Marathon. Now Congress, these wonderful senators and congressmen who cannot legislate, are on television immediately yelling and screaming, there's a breakdown in the system, we thought we had corrected it after 9-11, something has to be done. Uh, subcommittee chairman and committee chairman are saying, I am going to have a hearing, I am going to come to the bottom of this. These guys are a pain in the ass. I am so disappointed in the legislative branch. Legislators should legislate. These men don't even get on the floor of Congress that often and discuss the merits of proposed laws. They're always saying, well, there's no sense. We're, we're going to do this. We're not going to do that. And they know everything. They are many are trying to many manage the government right down the line. And that isn't their job. Their job is to have a concern. Their job is to ask questions. But don't become, you know, a TV character and say, I want to know the answers. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Go legislate. You guys are screwing up. You're not passing laws, especially laws that people want, like a little more gun restriction. Uh, what, 93% of the people, they say? And you have the audacity, you know? You're not doing your job and you criticize everyone else. I happen to think, by the way, that the FBI is a terrific organization. I said this earlier in this show. My experience with them is they're top-notch professionals. No one bothers to ask the question, and this is what bothers me with regard to Russia telling the FBI he's an extremist. How many of these reports a day does the FBI get? How many a day does the CIA get? I will bet you it is in the thousands. It may be... 40,000. It sounds unreasonable, but big world, big things going on. Whatever the number is, what's the process for handling them? Do they need more employees? I don't know. But I, 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 if, you know, this isn't an one thing. You get one telephone call or one written report from Russia, then you get another one after some time saying the same thing. You looked into it. What more can you do? I don't know. I don't know if any more could have been done here. Uh, I just don't know. But you just don't go out and knock the FBI who's out there saving our butts every day. Which brings me to another FBI case. The FBI is really, they're, they're doing bad in some regards. They're screwing up. I got to say it this way. I like what they do, but they're screwing up. The Ricin cases, R-I-C-I-N, that's that white powder that was sent to what? A couple of senators, a local judge, and the president of the United States in an envelope. And if you open that envelope up and you inhale the powder, you're dead instantly. And some nut somewhere in this country mailed that to the senators, the judge, and the president of the United States. Turns out the FBI, I think it was 24 hours, this whole case was solved. It was a gentleman from Tupelo, T-U-P-E-L-O, Mississippi, Tupelo, Mississippi. His name was Paul Kevin Curtis. They did this in 24 hours. 45 years old, an Elvis impersonator, father of four, and for what reason, I don't know, because they don't tell us. They assumed, or they determined, not assumed, he was the man who sent the ricin out. After four days, 
Curtis is released from jail. He didn't do it. They don't have any proof against him. Not the right guy they arrested. Now this is real scary because one, you shouldn't arrest the wrong person in this country. And two, God forbid, this guy, whoever it is, could be sending that stuff out to other people around the United States and perhaps someone may die. Well, Curtis says, I know who it is. The guy they said wasn't involved. He says, it's my friend. It's not my friend. It's an acquaintance, a person I know who dislikes me immensely. This is sounding like a bullshit investigation. Everett Douche is his name, and that's how you pronounce it, Douche. It's spelled D-U-T-S-C-H-K-E, but it's Douche, Douche. And you got Elvis here, and you got Douche, and you got Tupelo, Mississippi. It's a little humor. He said, El Everett did it because Everett don't like me. Well, the FBI went to Everett's house, okay, Douche's house, and they spent 10 hours going through his house, going through his computer, and they came up with zip, nothing, that would tie this man into ricin. So right now we don't know who done it. <laughs> the wrong guy was arrested immediately, which I think is an absolute catastrophe in this country. And that's the way that case is going, or went. I'm gonna talk about a dentist and a doctor today. There is no reason why you or me or anyone should go to a dentist's office or a doctor's office and get seriously sick or die as a result of what happened in the dentist's office or the doctor's office. Turns out the dentist and the doctor both ran dirty offices. I'm talking germs, dirty, dirty, dirt, physically dirty offices. Let's talk about the dentist first, an oral surgeon from Tulsa, Oklahoma, W. Scott Harrington. He didn't clean his dental utensils. He didn't keep the place free from germs. And, as, and you know, you deal, you go to the dentist, you bleed when they're in there, those gums. And the, the, whatever he had in there, he didn't wash and he used it on the next guy. There was a problem. 57 of his patients came down with hepatitis C, three with hepatitis B, and one with HIV. They blood tested 3,200 of his patients and they came up with that number in excess of 60 with, in effect, the HIV virus or 2B. Can't do that, you gotta be clean. Why should I go to the dentist and end up with hepatitis or HIV? Uh, dirty conditions. One of the men investigating the dentist's office, who's done this for years, said it was the worst dental office he had seen in his whole career. Filthy. Well, the dentist volunteered to give up his license. You know, I won't practice anymore and let me go. And fortunately, they said no. He's got a hearing August 16th before the dental board. Eventually, he's going to be indicted. You can't give people or create a situation which causes people to acquire something that can kill them. This man's going to jail. And then there is the doctor in Philadelphia, Gosnell, Kermit Gosnell, abortionist. This situation involving Gosnell popped up, came to the public's attention in 2011. I spoke of it at length in 2011 on this show. I wrote about it in my various columns in my blog in 2011. He's on trial now, Gosnell. And what he did was basically he killed uh, seven babies. They came out alive. These were long. These were uh, tri-term abortions. They were 28 weeks old, 30 weeks old. Some of these abortions, the fetus. If the baby came out alive, he took a pair of scissors and he snipped the spinal cord to kill the babies. Well, he's on trial for that. Mur those murders. He's on trial for for an adult who died while she was getting an abortion. The proof is coming in. Women were sitting on toilets and permitted to drop their fetuses into the toilet bowls. This man ran a filthy place. He's going to go to jail for a long time. He's on trial for murder right now in Philadelphia. Women were left with torn wombs and bowels. They got venereal disease because of non-sterilized equipment being used. And fetal remains were left inside them and they got sick. So that's what's going on with Gosnell. And he's going to jail too. All right. Now we're going to come up to the last segment in a minute. Please stay with me. It's going to be easier and it's going to be lighter. I'll be back. Stay with me. <laughs> 